Happy 420 everyone. We hope you're doing wonderful. Today is an important day for many of us as for me, it's important because I have the ability to use cannabis, um, not just THC products, but CBD and other cannabinoids to help me with my anxiety, my depression and my pain. And so today it's, it's all about celebration and for this wonderful plant, which is giving so many of us a new um, perspective in life. So today, I just want to talk to you briefly about CBD coffee and CBD tea. Last year, I worked with G2 Analytical to test coffee and tea to see if the caramel content was correct. What we found was, yes, the coffee had caramel content. The CBD tea did not have the full 100% of what it said. It was actually less. And so this time, we used Woody Beans coffee and high tea to test to see what happens after it's brewed. So Mike and I sat down and had a quick 15-minute uh, um, interview with um, Veronica and Todd Griffin from Griffin and Griffin Analytical. And I hope you will all enjoy this awesome interview. It dives a little deeper into what the process was and what the results were. And then uh, we'll be right back after this. So I want to let everybody know that we have um, Veronica and Todd Griffith here on um, on chat with us from G2, uh, I like to say G2 Analytical, Griffin and Griffin Analytical, and they were instrumental in working with us to test in um, CBD coffee and CBD tea, and uh, we're excited to present the results to everybody. So um, Veronica and Todd, can you just give us a basic, um, like Mike said, um, why we started the, the test and just a little overview of what you saw in the results. And then we will um, show the full document to the community for them to read on their own. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we kind of wanted to explore this study because we saw you know a rise in um, a lot of companies putting out products, CBD coffee, CBD teas. Um, so from our standpoint as chemists, we have an understanding that CBD and other cannabinoids are oil-based, so they typically don't like water. Um, so our first thought with seeing a lot of these products is that if you're brewing the coffee or brewing the tea, are you really getting any of the CBD or other cannabinoids into your drink in the end product? So the, our two goals really for starting the study were to measure the potency claims of each product. So we first wanted to make sure um, that the product, the manufacturers were putting the amount of cannabinoids they were saying on the label into their product. And then we also wanted to look at the efficacy of the delivery methods. So seeing if when you brew it, like you would a normal cup of coffee or a normal cup of tea, if you were actually extracting any of the cannabinoids into your drink. Um, and so kind of what we were able to see from this, uh, the, the uh, coffee did have very similar, uh, very close results to what the label claim was. So for the coffee that we tested in this specific study, the label was saying 50 milligrams per bag. We uh, measure 48, so it's 96% of the label. Um, and the tea was a little lower. Uh, the tea did say 15 milligrams. We measured about 8.1, so that's about 54%. Uh, we did notice, though, on the bag for the tea that the label was saying there were 15 milligrams of organic CBD hemp buds. Um, so that made it a little harder to determine, okay, are they putting in 15 milligrams of cannabinoids or 15 milligrams of the hemp buds? And whatever you get out of it is kind of what you get out of it. So we were kind of unsure on how to measure that part without talking to the company that makes it in general. Um, so then we went online, we were able to find, uh, it was like the National Coffee Association of the United States or something along those lines. Uh, the National, yeah, the National Coffee Association of USA. And we took their brewing recommendations for what they consider the perfect cup of coffee uh, and brewed this coffee according to that. So same water temperature, same amount of coffee to water ratio. Um, and then we also looked up some other sources for tea as well and we brewed it according to those specifications. We measured the um, amount of cannabinoids in the grounds before and after brewing. So we were able to see, uh, was there any change in the amount of cannabinoids previous to the brewing process and after? And then we also uh, analyzed the drink 
portion itself to see if there's anything in the actual water that you'd be drinking afterwards. Uh, from our results, we were able to see that there was no uh, detected amount of CBD in the post-brewed drink. Um, and then we actually went through and extracted from the grounds and the tea again, and we were able to see that there was relatively no change within uh, the grounds or the tea bag after brewing. So really everything that was in the tea bag or in the grounds was staying the same. So the water wasn't actually taking any of the cannabinoids out. Thank you. Um, <laughs> is there a way to do this test again from a different lab? Um, to see if the result will be the same, or do you think this is might be? Um, I'm asking the wrong question. Um, will doing this test in different facilities change the result, or do you estimate that it will probably be the same when it comes to the results? Um, we we believe that uh, we should any any lab would return similar results to what we did, uh, and I certainly kind of the consensus of the, of the other scientists we spoke to at the conference where we presented these results was that uh, they, they were not surprised to see the lack of, of CBD in the actual brewed beverage. Um, and, and so I would, I would expect those results would be very similar, but you certainly could send them to other independent laboratories to do this testing. Uh, it's also my understanding that most of the most of the testing that's done is actually done on the starting material on the, like for instance, in coffee, the coffee beans that are infused, they do the same procedure and do a, an organic liquid extraction. And the, the results turn out fine. I mean, it, it, it shows that these companies, or at least in the ones we've tested, these companies are putting CBD in, but uh, many labs do not go through the exercise of actually taking that and taking it to a final cup of coffee and then doing an extraction on the coffee. Hey, I had a quick question. Can you um, elaborate on the method or machinery used to test like HPLC or whatnot? And then the second part of that is just so the listeners or viewers know the temperature, um, once the products were brewed, what temperature the liquid was tested at. So I guess what, what method was used to test um, for mm -hmm. the cannabinoids and then what temperature was the final product uh, tested at? Not that it's a huge difference but just out of curiosity yeah so uh the method we use we use um hplc uh, so that's high pressure liquid chromatography um for the extraction methods on the starting material we use uh an organic uh solid liquid extraction and then on the uh drink afterwards we actually use a method called catchers um and that is uh using a salting to kind of force any um, organic compounds that we're looking for into an organic solvent layer that we're then able to test. So out of water into um, something like a cedar nitrile or an alcohol. Um, and then for temperature wise, uh, we tested the end brewed cups of uh, coffee and tea at room temperature. Uh, we didn't want to do it right with, you know, hot, hot water, but we did let them come to room temperature before we actually ran them on our instrument. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. And I'd like to let everybody know that um, we previously did run a test to verify that the contents were as accurate um, pre-brewed and the results was that it was accurate, um, with the exception of the tea. But we want to let people know we did test this um, prior last year to um, brewing um, to brewing so that, that we have a before and after results for the, for the community yeah. member. I had one more quick question without giving, cause I know a lot of companies in this industry, as far as the, the CBD companies and hemp companies like to use deceptive wording on packaging. Mm -hmm. But in mm -hmm. your opinion, is there a form of CBD on the market? I guess isolated just cannabidiol on the market today, in your opinion, without stating what form that is. So labels don't get changed that would actually yield the amount of CBD once it's brewed that's listed on the label in the final product? Yeah, so um, I've, I've actually given some thought to this and <clears throat> the the most likely source of being able to put it onto the beans and then have it be brewed from the beans into the final cup of coffee would be to use a formulation of CBD that is uh, quote unquote water soluble. 
and that's either using some emulsifier or some type of nanotechnology um, to make the the CBD uh, come off of the of the beans and go into the the end brewed uh, product. So I think if um, companies were using that type of formulation, you might actually see the final brewed tea or coffee contain uh, similar amounts of cannabidiol as we are seeing in the beans themselves after they've infused them. Um, to date, I've not tested any that have 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 shown that kind of trend where I can say, yes, the, the CBD that was on the beans has ended up in the final cup of coffee. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for, for this. Um, and is it lastly, the last question I have is, yeah. was there any other um, feedback and thoughts from the presentation over at um, PitCon 2020? You, you want to? Talk about the feedback and oh yeah so um we did talk um at PitCon. uh we did have um, a number of different uh scientists from other companies um as well as representatives from uh bigger brands beverage brands and stuff like that come and say they were very interested in you know what we did how we did it um they hadn't seen anyone actually go through the steps uh they all kind of had the same idea that it probably wouldn't work if they're not using something that's quote unquote water soluble because the cannabinoids are oil based. Um, so they were appreciative and they were very interested in seeing somebody actually go through the steps of basically applying the scientific method to this and seeing if it would work. And so we definitely got positive feedback from those that we spoke to at the conference. So I'll give you two I'll give you two two general areas. One was a was an alcohol beverage company that that was that is looking into this um, potentially when CBD goes mainstream into to food and beverage, um, this very well-known beverage, adult beverage company will probably move into this space. And they've been looking at how do you, how do you create or enhance the solubility of CBD into their adult beverages? Um, one of the other people that came up to us was they actually make the chemical that lines the inside of the beverages so that you don't get absorption onto the inside walls of your container. And they were worried about the, you know, is their liner going to um, absorb the CBD because maybe the CBD likes to stick to that as opposed to being in the liquid. So we're, we're seeing some of these industry food scientists actually think about the details uh, that, that are required to put out a quality uh, beverage product that is infused with CBD. And there's a lot of these little nuances that I think are starting to come up and people are starting to think about and consider uh, when it comes to pumping out these type of products. Hey, I had one quick, quench, one quick question when you mentioned the nano or the emulsifying. And just from my basic understanding of that, you need to use another chemical to you know, break the CB down to nanofy it or to emulsify it or whatever term you want to use. Do you guys know commonly what chemicals are used? Because we get a lot of, you know, this chemicals, are, we use this chemical to nanofy it or we don't use chemicals or there's people are saying when you make nano CBD, the chemicals are not something you'll want to put in your body, at least the chemicals that are used to do that. Can you guys talk a tad bit if you have knowledge on the safety or the, the current processes for nano or emulsifying cannabidiol? Yeah, absolutely. So most, most people, uh, when they talk about water soluble, the first step that people in this industry did was what's called micro emulsification. And that is <clears throat> essentially adding a chemical that will emulsify the liquid and suspend tiny droplets of the CBD into the liquid. Pharmaceuticals have been doing this type of stuff for, for eons. And um, those type of products kind of give you this not very clear, kind of cl milky, cloudy, um, because the particle sizes are quite large. But those are very well known. They're very stable. The, the chemicals that they use, um, it, everybody's got their own proprietary blend of what they use. And so I can't speak to everyone, but lecithin is a, is a, is a good emulsifying agent. Uh, that's used quite often. Uh, and then there are actually some mechanical techniques where they actually use high-powered 
uh, ultrasonic waves to try to break the solution into or the um, cannabidiol into smaller and smaller particles that can then be suspended. And that gives you the kind of the clearer, the more clear um, looking solutions. So that's because the, the particles are so tiny that they don't create that colloidal cloudy looking um, suspension that you're seeing. So really it's either some type of emulsifying agent like lecithin or they're using some type of mechanical means to, to really try to chop up the molecules into very tiny pieces. All right. Thank you. <laughs> hey, well, <laughs> I'm, I'm truly educated. Um, so thank you for the explanation and we appreciate the, um, the time you take to let our viewers know. And um, is there any way, if anybody able to reach you, how they can reach you? Yeah, so they can um, reach out to us on Instagram. Uh, we are, uh, even if we don't post a lot, we still do check that a lot. Um, and then also they can go to our website, um, g2analytical.com, reach out to us there. There's an email and a phone number there. So they're able to reach out to us uh, that way. So thank you, thank you. I hope you all enjoyed that. That was really awesome for me. Um, I'm so grateful for Todd and Veronica for, who have been supporting us. It's actually more exciting for me because this is my first real um, white paper study. And to be part of such an awesome organization without any bias, um, as you know, I'm all for transparency. I like to be unbiased as much as possible. And that's what makes my heart feel warm. So to be part of something so unique uh, for the first time being one of the first to test to see what happens when you brew coffee and CBD. So please share this video, tell all your, your, your friends and family. And um, lastly, I'd like to say that I love Buddha Beans coffee. I love tea. And I know that Kalina loves the, the coffee. It's one of the best we've ever tried. And so this is no knock against um, anyone. We just wanted to, to start a conversation on finding the better methods and to see if Cabinos will actually present after brewing uh, both coffee and tea because I love I love tea too, and the results was um, a lot of people expected the results. But please share with us. Let us know what you think in the comments. In the description below, I have the PDF and also a link to the PitCon um, PowerPoint um, paper that we did for the the PitCon. I'm so grateful for PitCon for allowing Griffin and Griffin to um, present this information. There was so many wonderful feedback I just saw in the previous um, 15 minutes that we just had with, with Todd and Veronica. Um, I hope this doesn't discourage you from drinking coffee and from actually buying CBD coffee. It's in there, we just have to find a way to um, do something that's better. Hopefully we will find a solution um, as soon as possible and let the community know. We have a wonderful 420, love you. Thank you for always for the support. Please follow us at www.cbd.how for all things education and for our plugin. For those of you who are looking for online community, please go to www. Ah, oh, I said it wrong, right? <laughs> www.canaforce.org and continue to support us. Please um, follow us on Instagram, YouTube, Reddit, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn. I love you all. Have a beautiful day. Please, please be safe. And remember, always take your CBD. Peace.